meeting. So for that, uh, we have invited uh, Mr. Uday Ayatkar, sir, uh, consultant in TPAPPL, and he will cover the modern data collection techniques, MPIU, drones, lidar, bridge evaluation, prediction models, rating, and he will also give some examples to understand the participant about the bridge inventory and the condition survey. I will request to all the participants that please make it a, a two-way communication. If you have any query uh, with regard to the subject or the contents of the presentation, they can ask the questions with the faculty, sir. Our faculty will try to give the answer of all of your questions. Uh, for the question answer session, uh, we have also kept, uh, we have also, um, uh, my voice is audible. Sir, slightly low volume, sir. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, now, I think my voice is audible. Yeah, it is audible. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, okay. So, at the last of this uh, session, uh, there will be a 10 15 minutes time for the question answer session. In that, participant can ask the question with the faculty, and our faculty will try to give the answer of our all of your questions. However, in during the presentation, if any participant have any query or questions, they can raise their hand on the chat box or he, they can also write their questions or the query on the chat box. Our faculty will try to see their queries and if possible, during the presentation, he will give the answer. Otherwise, he will take all the questions or the queries during the last of his presentation. Uh, basically, uh, this training program is being hosted by Mr. Uh, Dr. Sanjay Bakshure sir, but today Dr. Sanjay Bakshure sir is on leave, so I have to start this training program. Uh, myself is Sunil Gupta, I am Deputy Director in this academy. So I once again welcome all of you uh, participants uh, for today's session. Uh, now I will request uh, to our today faculty Mr. Uday sir to start his presentation. Sir. Yes, please. Uh, good morning everyone. Uh, my presentation basically cover the uh, field work that we do normally for a bridge condition survey. Uh, and uh, fortunately, we have also uh, done this field work by uh, using MBIU and drone also. Uh, drone with uh, photogrammetric camera and uh, drone with uh, mounted with uh, uh, LiDAR camera. So I'll start my presentation. Yes, sir. Is the screen visible? No, sir. Yes, sir. Now the screen is visible. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, my name is Uday Karatkar. I'm vice president of a consultancy firm called TPF TPL. And uh, we are basically an uh, international company based in uh, Belgium. And we are a conglomerate of different concerns in different countries. Uh, I'm representing Pune regional office in India. So starting with the flow of presentation, so this will be the contents of the presentation. This is the bridge inventory condition survey, measure inventory and condition survey, which is MBIU, drone, LIDAR. Distress bridges, I have given some, I have taken some videos and examples. Then bridge evaluation, conclusion of inventory and training survey, bridge rating, prediction models, and examples and videos. As we all know, India is one of the largest road networks across the world, spanning over a length of more than 6 million kilometers, catering to about 64.5% of goods traffic and 90% of passenger traffic. In fact, uh, passenger traffic is more on roads nowadays than on uh, railways, which was exactly the opposite of uh, maybe a, a couple of uh, uh, fortnight, uh, four centuries back. Uh, with the annual latest technique, machine equipment, this length is increasing rapidly. We, can, we all know we are doing almost 37, 47 kilometers per day of uh, road construction. <clears throat> and actually road network can be considered as the lifeline of the country. Uh, American roads are not good because America is rich, but America is rich because American roads are good. This was a statement made by 
US President John F. Kennedy. And uh, it really holds true. The better the condition of roads, uh, more improvement, more uh, rich the country will become. Am I audible? Yes, sir. So necessity of bridge inventory and condition survey. Why it is necessary to do this exercise at all? Uh, it is required to study the life cycle of a bridge so far and determine the balance life of the bridge. Uh, we are all always worried about the balance life of the bridge. We are using the bridges. Uh, most of the traffic which flows on the bridge, uh, which uh, uses the bridge, are not even aware if there is any distress in the bridge at all. And then. Uh, there is lack of data. So actually, as of now, the data regarding bridge uh, life of bridge or the condition of bridge is not is not there at all or is available in small uh, bits and pieces. There is no single platform where data is available. Then planning of future step projects is required. The life cycle of bridge generally bridges are designed for a life cycle of 100 years as per IRC 112. And this can be divided into five phases. The concept of the feasibility of the bridge. Here, most of the technical team is expert are available. Then, conceiving the idea, team of experts to monitor the progress, designing and detailing. Then, being pregnant with the idea, that is actual construction phase. Here also, we have a lot of technical engineers, skilled laborers, etc. Then, commissioning of the bridge. A lot of technical experts are there to take credit for the creation. Once the bridge is commissioned for use, after that, there is lack of uh, lack of uh, uh, interest mostly um, by the concerned uh, department to actually monitor the bridge. Not many are bothered about its health. There is a lack of involvement. Then, of course, expiry and decommissioning, we don't know much about it. The situation prior to con uh, conducting the inventory and condition was like lack of data was there, as I already explained. There is no single platform. Maintenance and repairs was being carried out only on occurrence of failure. Generally, they are proposing a, a breakage. Uh, there is a, uh, this thing. A fault in the bridge parapet or something like this. Minor repairs are always carried out, but they are in bits and pieces. Now, even routine maintenance such as cleaning of weeds, shrubs on bridge repairs, or cleaning of expansion joints are not done. Uh, most of the times, if you we travel and close close all the bridges, the expansion joints are normally not made cleaned at all. Even the, the drainage spouts are choked. There sometimes the drainage spouts are there not all. You see the photograph on the right side. You'll find that the Stone masonry pier is having a shrub uh, thing, growth. So uh, steps have been initiated by the central government in this regard. The Indian bridge management system was formed mainly to look into the woes of the health of bridges across the country. The situation prior to reception of IBM was the uh, global unity of structures was missing, although some data existed within the framework. Periodic condition survey and balance headline is missing. No specific budget for repairs and maintenance as and when funds were required, which was asked for, which was granted. Piecemeal approach to repair and maintenance of structures on ad hoc basis. So uh, with the RL of IPMS, the condition of old and vintage bridges are known. Now we do have a data with the, all the bridges on national highways, India. We have the data on the, all the bridges. Bridge location, classification, structural rating, and socioeconomic ratings have been recorded. Bridge data compiled and available on single platform. Coordination and planning for replacement old bridges is made easy now. Year marking of resources for rehabilitation, repairs, and reconstruction, prioritization also can be done. Depending on the rating of the bridge, uh, the central government can decide on which bridge to take up uh, for repairs and rehabilitation first. Then, future planning for operation of bridges with increase in axle loads, oblique or low load is possible. And durability, service, and design life of the structure can be ascertained. So currently, about one lakh seventy thousand structures as of uh, 2019. Uh, inventory of more than uh, one lakh seventy thousand bridges have been uh, structures have been completed. The inventory covers one lakh thirty-four thousand culverts, thirty-two thousand minor bridges, and three thousand six hundred major and one thousand eight hundred extra long bridges. This actually data will, uh, for, is only for the national highway. So three to four cycles of condition survey has been completed till 2019. So IBM is currently depository of the data and there is need to develop an management information system 
and decision making software based on this data. Condition of old and heritage bridges is known, and decision bridges are identified. Uh, I'm not aware of how this data is being used at present, but definitely uh, IBMS and uh, MOT or NHA can look into this data and study the data for rehabilitation and repairs of mostly bridges on the national highways. Bridge location, classification, structure rating, and social rating have been recorded now. Bridge data comp compiled and available on single platform. Coordination and planning for replacement of old bridges is made easy. Year marking of resources for average pricing have been done. There are certain uh, problems that underwater inspection was not carried out with using this MBIU because it needs very highly skilled bridge inspectors with scuba diving skills. Foundations also cannot be inspected. Text laptop cannot be inspected because most of them are covered with uh, either a PC or a plastic layer. So it is all covered. So text laptop cannot be inspected. Special structures like cable shed bridges, extra dose bridges, field trust bridges, and uh, need a special MBO or other equipment and highly skilled bridge inspectors. Because of the shape of the bridge, it is slightly difficult to use the mobile bridge inspection rate for this purpose. Wide tick bridge also cannot be inspected because the, the reach of the MBA is limited to about 7.5 meters. So if you are having a more than uh, four lane uh, structure, it's slightly difficult to inspect the entire bridge socket. Two lane bridges also is slightly difficult because you have to, because the MBA is uh, parked on top of the bridge, one lane uh, gets closed and uh, there is a traffic stall. The road is very busy. Bridge rating and balance service life was not carried out by us for this uh, MBI work in Kerala. So this is generally the uh, flow of uh, our presentation. I'll start with the inventory and condition survey. Actually, IBMS has, uh, has uh, introduced one software uh, which was developed by IDDC. There's the IDDC uh, this manual is there. I can share the manual or I'll, uh, I can share the manual with all of you. This is the type of uh, operating manual and uh, rating has been given. So the top row here, it shows the national highway number. Then uh, state to which it belongs. Then the RTO zone of the state, the type of road, uh, if it is national road, national highway or state highway. Then change, then cumulative bridge code. The second row gives the uh, bridge location. This gives the latitude and the longitude. You can see over here, it is a latitude and longitude of the bridge. Then third row gives the bridge classification number. Then fourth row gives the bridge uh, structural rating, uh, where there's an integral and non-degral deck, superstructure, substructure, etc. Then geometry. Then uh, fifth row gives the socioeconomic number. Going further, the, here the nationality number is already given. Third, uh, fourth row gives the bridge structural rating also. So what is a uh, bridge inventory? It can be defined as the naming sum of a bridge, wherein it is which location is defined and initial structural status is also determined. In the inventory, we actually identify the bridge. We give it a certain ID number so that at any time in the future, if you are referring to that ID number, you know that what kind of bridge is there, what type of bridge is there, and uh, where is the location, etc., including state, and uh, under whom it is, who, who is the uh, who is the user. It is given a unique identification number which refers to all future condition surveys. The initial rating of the bridge is the basic data, and all future condition surveys are compared to this data, and the rate of deterioration of the bridge is determined. So the Basic data is to which everything is referred in future condition survey is referred to this. The actual thorough inspection of the bridge is done after the inventory. It is generally observed that whereas the periodic maintenance of payment is generally done annually, the periodic uh, period between two consecutive inspection of bridges often is more than three years. Where if the bridge condition survey is not done uh, annually or so. However, the things are changing now. The condition survey is done periodically twice in a year, pre monsoon and post monsoon. During the survey, certain minimum maintenance steps such as removal of vegetation, clean up expansion joints, reason of bearing, etc., are also carried out. Uh, when we did the bridge condition survey in Kerala, we also did this uh, type of small bus. We had a uh, team of uh, 
workers and engineers who used to do the minimum maintenance, such as shrub cleaning and uh, cleaning expansion joint, reason of bearing, etc. The findings of the condition survey are shared with the nodal agency in spot, where the data is compiled and necessary action on critical basis in order of priority and seriousness of distress is taken. The condition of a uh, condition of a bridge can be covered by using one of the following equipments if it's MBIU, drone, and LiDAR camera. So we'll start with the MBIU uh, presentation. MBIU. So um, this is a photograph of an uh, MBIU that uh, our company is possessing. We own this equipment. So mobile equipment is an electromechanical device mounted on a truck. Which provides access to hidden parts of the bridge for similar infrastructure for their proper inspection. Then the present version is truck mounted. We are having a truck mounted system. Uh, device for the inspection of road bridges. There are two types of uh, MBAUs. One is the cage type, and is the platform type. The cage type consists of a truck chassis, hydraulic jacks, uh, four numbers which are used to level the truck descending vertically. An articulated telescope boom, consisting of a telescope main boom and mounted on the turntable by means of hydraulic system. The platform type is uh, provided with a working platform, heavier in weight. Therefore, truck chassis and stabilization system should be selected carefully to keep tires and stabilizers ground pressure on bridge deck within control limits during translation and stabilization operation. This is a small introduction on the uh, equipment that we are possessing. The main boom is there, crane outer boom is there. Extension cylinder is there, extension booms are there, work fan basket. This is the place where the uh, engineer and the uh, operator uh, sits. The crane pass is there, stabilizing, stabilizer out trigger is there, base is there, stabilizer cylinder is there. So further, there is a linkage system, uh, mechanical extensions, and outer boom. This is the control uh, panel of the, uh, of the MBIU, which is in the hands of the operator who is sitting in the so uh, we did a MBA work, condition survey work for the state of Kerala. This was our concern. So we did, provided inventory and assess the bridge condition and assessment of distress condition. Prepare estimate for remedial measures. We even suggested remedial for the measures for the distress beam, uh, the bridge. An objective that. So our objective is to improve operational availability of the structure, prevent downtime and enhance of life of structure, avoid accumulation of defects leading to major uh, defect rendering asset in uh, unsuitable for prolonged. As we all know, the stitching time saves nine. So if there is any defect on an initial stage, it's better to remedy then and there only, so that long-term effects are not there. Then prepare database for timely maintenance, consolidate requirement of periodical maintenance. Uh, this is the name of the work that. Uh, we conducted the name of the client, North. Our fees were around 50.36 was a period of 36 months. And we have presently covered it, uh, completed four cycles of uh, inventory and condition survey. This is the name of the ministry uh, officers who were present during the operation. And this is a summary of the, uh, of the bridges uh, in Kerala, totaling around 498 and the total number of culverts is 2218. Total length of national highway in the state of Kerala is 1750.73 kilometers. The map of Kerala. Just uh, quickly run through the data that I'm having. The state of coast, uh, uh, coastline of uh, 490 kilometers and width of state varies between 11 to 120 kilometers. Kerala, as you know, is from north to south is a narrow state, uh, narrow width, narrow width. The width varies from around 11 kilometers to 121 kilometers, whereas the length of the north south length of the state is around 590 kilometers. Uh, it actually is the major highway that passes through Kerala is the Panvel Kanyakumari Highway. 
NH66 at present. As can be expected, previously it was uh, NH70. Uh, there are major bridges over the backwater. Since the major main highway, NH60 runs almost parallel to the uh, sea, sea coast, there are, we can expect a lot of major bridges with backwaters on this highway. The other national highways, they crisscross from east to west, except for some small uh, four lane stretches on the Panvel. All other national highways are in the state are in two lane. So it was a big problem doing the condition survey. The eastern region of the Kerala consists of high mountains, gorges, and deep cut valleys. One can come across various types of bridges in the, uh, in the state, such as Bow String Concrete Bridge, Arch Bridge, Precious Concrete Bridges, RCC Dexla Bridges, etc. So our job was to check the health of the bridge. Uh, we declared the status of the bridge after fully observing the structural components of the bridge using the MBIU for any defects of the development of cracks, vegetation growth, bearings, expansion joints, visible export uh, portion of piers, etc. The observations are carefully recorded in, in standard form along with supporting photographs and sent to IDDC in PDF format for verification and upload. We used to collect this data and uh, send it to IDDC, which was the representative of uh, ministry. We suggested the type of field test, lab test for critical bridges or bridge components and carry out the test based on the instructions, like directions from the ministry. Our scope also includes minor maintenance, I already uh, mentioned in our test lecture. So what are the difficulties? The permissions from state government organizations, especially police department, was a, a tedious job. It required a lot of uh, uh, follow ups. Then, many of the structures are two oblique intermediate lane bridges. With, with airway varying from 5.5 to 7 meters, resulting in traffic starts during bridge. Inventory of the conditions survey work, the local traffic police requested us to complete the work as quickly as possible because of the existence of only 5.5 meter or 7 meter uh, mid, uh, carriageway with uh, bridges. The police department would always uh, force us rather to complete the inspection as fast as possible. Uh, difficulty in completing with local authorities, of course, that was also a problem because uh, in the state of Kerala mostly. Malayali language is used. Sometimes English also is uh, used. Bridges with less than three millim uh, three meter clear height above water level are not approachable using MBIU. There is a limitation to the MBIU. Uh, we cannot do uh, inspection of a condition survey of a bridge where the clear height from the soft to the bridge to the water level is less than three meters. Uh, restrictions on account of either the special type of bridges like Posting bridge or structural steel truss bridge, there of our uh, MBI could not be used, or there was a actually partially we could use it where locations where the uh, bucket could you go below the bridge. In physical fatigue on long stretches of bridge uh, highways, actually our team used to travel kilometers and kilometers to reach a bridge point, and by the time they reached, they were already uh, there was a fatigue on there. So engineers or uh, field workers were slightly uh, tired. Before starting the condition survey, the difficulty in approaching the soft fit of slab uh, span over railway tracks. Of course, where the uh, where the ROBs were to be inspected, we could not uh, we could not inspect the spans which uh, which were over the railway track. The process of upload, uh, uploading and inventory data in the on the tabs getting approved. There was a system that we had to upload the data, and the upload of our data was to be confirmed from IDC, and then we could go for the further inspection. Just a small video showing uh, the MBO in action. Just I'll put it in a different format. Give me just one minute. I'll, I'll open it in a different.
తెలిసినప్పుడు మీకు తెలిసినప్పుడు ఎగ్జాక్ట్లీ కాదు మీరు ప్రెసెంటేషన్ షేర్ కొడతాయి వీడియో మాత్రం చూపించ అయితే పుచ్చుకుంత కొడతాయి మనే కదా సార్ పుచ్చుకుని మంచిగా కాయ రోటేట్ అన్ని విచారా తన్నా హలో ఇదే వీడియో ఇదే నో సార్ ఎంటైర్ <laughs> 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 okay sir uh, so this is the video of a uh, mbi in action uh, this was actually on recently we have conducted one condition survey at on uh, panipur jalandhar highway nh uh, nh1 nh44 the new number you can see the uh, detailed video you can see the cabin uh, with our engineer and operator going very near to the girder inspecting the girder at close quarters we can take the photographs yeah, if there is any crack there monitoring that we even have a crack uh, width measuring uh, scale that also is being measured normally uh, till now such thing was not possible Uh, we were never able to go right below the bridge to see the conditions of the girders etc this bucket can go up to 7.5 meter from the edge of the bridge below the bridge to operate sitting next to the engineer he is actually operating and as per the instruction engineer he goes below the soffit of the bridge you can see the condition of the ground below the bridge out of vegetation growth etc there probably it is hindering the flow of smooth flow of water below the bridge
काय करतोय काय करतोय तिथं बसून करू शकतो Only for one span, it takes almost uh, anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes for one span of the break. Any crack is uh, detect, uh, observed immediately, the width of the crack is uh, noted down and even photographed. Even the dimensions of the girders are measured, flange, bottom flange is being measured. The boom is being uh, retracted now. The observations are noted down in a notebook and later on this uh, condition survey is recorded in PDF format. Actually, we make a word document and then convert it to PDF and we share it with the nodal agency. We are now almost coming out of the south of the bridge. The main truck, main equipment is uh, parked at the top of the bridge. So uh, I hope it was informative. We can we could have seen uh, we could see the actual inspection being done. So these are the limitations here. We can see there's a bowstring bridge. Uh, am I audible? Hello. Yes, sir, audible, sir, audible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so continuing with the next slide, uh, this I've shown you the uh, bowstring bridge in the in the state of Kerala, where we can use this I, uh, MBI only at locations where there is a space for the bucket to go below the bridge. 
Uh, this again is a problem of uh, doing inspection for a RO loop. Here, the span over the railway tracks cannot be inspected, mainly because we have, will have to probably take a blockage of the railway. It is not very easy. Uh, in, under such conditions, normally we go below the uh, below the span and take photographs as far as possible to, from the nearest quarters. Then there are certain bridges like this one, minor bridges there where it's not possible for the MBIU bucket to reach, nor it is possible for even the uh, even the engineers or staff to go below the bridge. However, in spite of that, we have managed to wade through the slush water, and our engineers have gone below the minor bridges to inspect the bridge. There's, a, there's one uh, bridge, Perimutum bridge in uh, Kerala. Uh, it was in uh, it was in distress, and on account of our uh, condition survey and uh, timely in, uh, intervention, it was repaired. Uh, you can see the before and after pictures of this uh, Perimutum bridge. Before it was having a stone masonry pier with a lot of roads. Uh, finally, it was repaired and it was donated from all around. It was strengthened. A closer picture of the pier, and you can see the bridge uh, deck soffit and the girder where it's in for exposed. Then that again was uh, benighted with concrete mortar. Here, actually, the peculiarity was that the bridge uh, was located at a location where the road uh, was almost running parallel to the water body, and even the embankment had to be uh, strengthened. This is a photograph of uh, MBIU in action. Actually, I have shared maximum photographs because it gives the best, uh, it's the best way of explaining the things. There's a Palavarotum flower in, uh, in the in city of uh, Cochin, which was in terrible distress, although the bridge was, I think, uh, inaugurated somewhere in 2015 or 16, but uh, it had developed a lot of cracks and we had highlighted those cracks. I'll uh, share a video also subsequent, uh, separate presentation on this. In Bengal also, we have done uh, MBIU uh, bridge condition survey. We have different bridges where we have highlighted the uh, highlighted uh, tracks, distresses in the bridges, like this Bala uh, Bridge, where vertical compression tracks of 0.1 mm, 0.9 mm, where tracks profiting from pier gaps, vertical compression tracks of 0.6 mm width, superimposed dead load on the Form, in the form of RCC crash barrier, which really originally we were not designed for RCC crash barrier, and subsequently it was constructed on that bridge. Some more uh, detailed photographs of this Palabut uh, bridge. Uh, in the TV, uh, non district test was uh, carried out with uh, UPV, uh, UPV, rebound hammer test, half cell potential, etc. The concrete strength of the bridge was found to be of poor quality. Uh, on the inference of the results that we got from the uh, NDT. Rehabilitation in the form of crack sealing by epoxy grouting, uh, RC jacketing pairs, 10 year pier caps with uh, CF uh, carbon reinforced fiber uh, laminates, reduction in uh, SIDL by demolishing the RC crackpair was suggested. We had even uh, given the estimate for the same. There's one more bridge, the Panchan, uh, Panchan uh, Setu bridge. Here are also different distresses were observed. I'm just uh, highlighting the detail, like the uh, elsomeric bearing having the track and deformed. One more bridge, Gilandi bridge, uh, where actually we have observed a vertical compression tracks of bearing width up to 2.5 mm, with our progressing longitudinally all along the pier. You can see the vertical track, the pier. Here also we have done handy uh, non distributive tests on site, even we have taken core. <coughs> and we have suggested rehabilitation measures, and the state government immediately took, took this uh, up. And you can see the straining of uh, pier by jacketing. A photograph of uh, before the jacketing and after jacketing is shown over here. Then there's Dharla Bridge. Here also, a lot of problems there. I'll be uh, sharing a uh, separate presentation on this Dharla bridge. Another bridge which had a uh, lot of distresses. You can see the condition of uh, bearings rusted and uh, having a lot of problems. 
even the rubber ring was coming out. Upen Burman Shetu Bridge also was another bridge where a lot of uh, distresses were observed. Another bridge. And this is the team in action at in Bengal. Even um, expansion joints had a lot of cracks. These are some of the photographs, uh, close photographs of the distresses that we observed in the bridges, like exposed reinforcement, cracks. You can see the photo on the extreme right in terrible condition. Minor cracks also have been observed and highlighted by us. Distress in uh, bearings. You can see the bearing, the unequal shatterment of bridge. Probably the uh, lock plate also was not removed, resulting in the distress. We have done the non distributive testing. There is one bridge, uh, Fuji Diana Bridge, in the state of uh, West Bengal. Uh, we had actually highlighted the condition of the pier, and uh, we were sure it was a score and probably it will settle. This is just a for a small video for the settlement of the pier on account of scoring. Only two or three months prior to this uh, incident, we had highlighted the problem on this bridge and we had even mentioned it probably is going to settle. So this is a small video of that uh, bridge where the where two spans have settled, pier has settled. It is an extra dose uh, bridge. Uh, in our report, we had mentioned the substructure comprised of short well points and is insufficient in respect of score depth at bridge pier location. So we had highlighted this for two, three months prior to the incident that actually occurred. It's like now the bridge is closed. Uh, with our presence all over India as a consultant. There's a list of ports for uh, conditions are we So we have done with uh, MBIU, Mobile Bridge Inspection Unit, condition survey of a bridge by using MBIU. Then there is another uh, next system that can be used is a UAV drone. One minute. Look. Uh, actually, I'm in a training now. Can you who is being? Uh, me, me, the like, uh, at the IHA training, just like the madam, please run request for a thing to put on the phone. Please, yeah, thank you. Unmanned aerial uh, vehicle, uh, UAV overview, UAV bridges. And photogrammetry, data based camera, ideal system, shortcomings, and conclusion. These are the contents of the presentation. So, here is an uh, unmanned aerial vehicle which have following characteristics it's pilotless, it's remotely controlled. You have a wide range of applications. This presentation covers bridge element. Nowadays, drones are used for a number of, uh, number of, uh, uh, use, a number of uses are there. We can even use it for a defense uh, vigilance. So classifying UV, uh, UV is given over here. <clears throat> so group one, group two, group three, group four, and group five. Uh, normally size is group one and uh, small one. Then group two is medium, large, larger, largest. Actually, the weight of the drone is plays a very important part uh, in the use of drones. Up to the small ones are only up to 10 kg or so. Medium is up to 55 kg. Group three, 600 kg. Group four, 604 kg plus. The altitude up to which these uh, drones can fly, 365 meter, 1050 meter, 5500 meter, and all. Uh, speeds up to 100 knots, 250 knots, any speed actually, some large uh, drones can go very fast. 
the normal uh, bridge inspector is wondering over here how to observe the software of the bridge at such close quarters for detailed minor details uh, study. So we can see it's, uh, it's standing somewhere down below the bridge and seeing how, how to do how to look at it closely. I've seen a, I've shown a photo of a year where the uh, technician or the engineer is dangling from the top of a steel dust brick. Uh, the risk of the inspector dangling from the time member of the trust, uh, steel trust is taking uh, tremendous risk. The risk can be completely avoided if we make use of a remotely controlled camera commented on drone and inspect the structure as, as thoroughly or maybe even better than the worker. If we physically send somebody over there and talk and try to inspect the trust, uh, maybe we can using, uh, using a drone, we can have a better look at all the joints, all the detailing of the structure. The whole point of you is enabling a high tech camera uh, to photograph the unreachable area of the bridge. This may include the software slab, beams and stringers at great heights, pylons, even pylons, even uh, the cable state bridges with very high pylons, so that we can even inspect those pylons. Candular portion of the deck also can be observed, trusses can be observed. All these sitting in a safe place, we don't have to physically go on top of a bridge or on top of a pylon to see what is the status of the, what is the state of the pylon. Actually, a structure retains its objective if it surpasses design life while serving its intended functional use without much damage to its integrity. So a structure is successful if it surpasses its uh, design life and it serves the purpose for which it is constructed. So here is one of the means to assess this. So another bit said that it takes less time as compared to other conventional methods. Uh, previously, probably scaffolding staging used to be uh, erected to inspect the bridge from bottom. Uh, this is avoided. Reduces risk, thus assuming, uh, assuring safety of inspection crew. Of course, it is very safe. You are sitting somewhere uh, near the bridge and inspecting the bridge without going, actually physically going to the uh, elements that we are going inspecting. And obtains more accurate data based on instrument, given safety standards and requirements. Data can be analyzed immediately for real time and can be stored for later analysis. We can even photograph, we can video over uh, whole the uh, inspection and record it and can be uh, stored also. This is just a flow chart I've shown. It has been observed that for optimum efficiency, the operation time for UAV should be low and maintenance period should be long based on the current scenario. So what are the factors that have an effect on the course of the UAV? Obviously, older the bridge, more likely chance of encountering damage to the structure, resulting in more operation time, which is not desirable. If you are inspecting a very old bridge, then probably it'll take more time for us to inspect. And uh, uh, it is not cost effective. Also, the local regulation can affect the cost of the survey. Uh, local, from uh, state to state, district to state, there are different regulations and rules and regulations for permissions, etc. That also affects. And software used for analysis will also have a direct bearing on the cost. And the software used for uh, analyzing data collected by the drone is also an important factor. But you see the structure age is important, operation time is important, period of use is important, local regulations are important. Then analysis package, the software that we are using also important. The analysis package plays an important part. As post photography, the integ uh, integration platform should be a beam uh, building a function model. Software like Tecla XR. Uh, I will share a uh, video. Uh, actually, representing this Samrudhi Mahagwa between uh, Nagpur to Mumbai is being uh, constructed. And we are authority engineer for package 8, uh, which is near Chalna, uh, Aurangabad. So I'll just share one video, uh, which will clearly highlight the way a drone can be used to monitor the progress of work.
Is it visible? Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, yes, it is visible. This is uh, Samrudhi Mahamarg, uh, uh, expressway corridor between Nagpur to Mumbai, presently in progress. Uh, this video is of uh, package eight, uh, where the present progress is almost uh, almost 75, 80 percent. As you can see, the way the prudent has been used to the locations and the uh, progress as is visible very easily. We can monitor the progress. The design speed for this highway is 150 km per hour. And the allowable speed is going to be 120 km per hour. The total uh, length of this uh, stretch uh, package is around 40, 48, 47. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, my office is uh, located very near to a railway track, and there will be some difference uh, disturbance. Finally, of course, nowadays this railway is also they are restricted to lot a lot of their trends. The system is not that much.
केला तर मेल ते म्हणजे गव्हर्नमेंट नवीन इन्स्ट्रक्शन त्याच्यानंतर त्याबद्दल बोलायचे त्यामुळे मेल करते मी एक वाजता फ्री झाल्यावर कॉल बॅक करते is end of our package is the presentation uh, visible now yes sir yeah Uh, yeah uh, next slide regarding photogrammetry it is a science of taking measurements from the photos input is the photograph and the output is typically a map or a drawing or a major uh, 3d model of some real world object or scene so there are actually basically two types of first most common form is based on location of camera aerial and terrestrial you can see the quality of the photograph everything can be photographed in very, very close quarters The horizontally mounted cameras on UV uh, takes multiple overlapping photos, about 80 to 90 percent overlap, to generate a close to real model of the existing structure. The digital surface models are prepared from high uh, from such photos to arrive at a high degree of accuracy and estimation of uh, various aspects like height, etc. The modeling and design part follows the same system as mentioned in slide. So, what are the most important? You can observe that the similarity between the real life bridge photo and its model image is really striking. You see the uh, model and the real life photo. You find that it's almost almost identical, top photo and the bottom. Uh, most of the structures in India are very old and in extremely dilapidated state and needs urgent upgrade. The advanced image collection through this technique produces 3D scene collection and 3D models to high degree of relative dimensional accuracy. We can actually even measure up to Maybe mm to mm. Photogrammetric models utilize the principle of triangulation to identify key points between the two different images of triangle. Uh, triangulate these uh, to triangulate back to single viewpoint. So overlap is key aspect here. As you know, this, uh, we have superimposed two images taken from very close angles, then we get a 3D image. The images are closely examined to arrive at contractual uh, document that reflects specific remedial works with no risk of variation. A circled portion over here is having a damage, so that has been highlighted here. The most critical area of the damage marked, with uh, which requires urgent attention. So, uh, just a flows chart sort of a thing. Condition reassessment, desktop uh, desktop review of existing documentation, public condition reports, site inspection to assess current condition, identify issues requiring rectification or potential renewal of works. Produce a condition of the inspection report that contains an inventory of the component. So, repair scoping, desktop review of the existing documentation, potential detailed testing required to determine uh, detection mechanisms, drawings, repairs, uh, specification, and bill of quantities. And tender document is prepared based on that, often produced by client in collaboration with the consultant. Disclaims responsibility, scope, and quantities. Then, renewal works undertaken based on the information provided. And limited to the specific code and constraints that are outlined by the tender document. In construction quality uh, documentation uh, provided to client, which may include as constant drawings, reading uh, red line markups, and completed inspection design. We have seen the uh, drone with the photogrammetry camera. Uh, actually, nowadays, even LiDAR camera, previously, LiDAR camera were used only on uh, ground. Probably that can mounted on a uh, vehicle, but now even ladder camera can be installed on a drone. The drone is just a temporary ent uh, entity of the high performance camera mounted on it. Like this camera is the one which provides the real time images to the operator or the user who now analyzes data to understand the structural performance of it. So far, we have studied outcome of a drone mounted with photograph camera only. So now we'll study the ladder camera. There are two kinds of uh, cameras mounted on the UV, the photogrammetry and the ladder camera. 
So LIDAR stands for Light Detection and Ranging. It's a remote sensing method which uses light in the form of a pulse laser to measure ranges, which is variable distance to, reach, uh, to the structure. These pulses combine with other airborne devices to generate precise three-dimensional information about the uh, area of particular surface characteristics. The left side uh, photograph shows a LIDAR camera mounted on a UAV. So this is a 3D construction of a uh, bridge, photograph taken by a ladder. There are basically two types of uh, ladder cameras. One is a topographic measure distance on land using a near infrared uh, laser. Special application for road projects where distances play important factor. It's a bathymetric uh, camera which are used in measure distance in an aquatic environment using penetrating green laser. Under the bridge road project needs, uh, we actually should use this type of camera also to study the underwater uh, status of uh, piers. These are some of the technical details, critical components that are uh, that are uh, there in the ladder camera. So some more details. The returning pulse of uh, returning pulse of laser information called returns can be available in two formats. They are discrete format. So record individual peaks in the waveform uh, curve at points. This is a dome at each break point in waveform. Each laser pulse records one to uh, one dash uh, one to four peaks. Full waveform it records the distribution of the return light and thus are more, more complex to analyze but capture more information. Uh, collection of all this data in any of the above format is called point cloud. So we we actually have a point cloud uh, drawing in front of us. The commonly supporting file format for point cloud is American Society of Photogrammetry and Remote Sensing, or compressed version of the same called dot less format. So each point in ladder will have three attributes of X, Y, Z, and uh, coordinates. The ladder points also have light in this associated with it, indicating the more intense light, better reflection. Of it will be in 3D image. The surface from where light bounces can also be classified like vegetation, etc. There are numerous software packages for mapping of ladder data, but the uh, essence of this is to convert into a meaningful 3D model. There are a lot of uh, different softwares are available uh, which can uh, analyze the data, but the main intention or main final result has to be a 3D model. Now the accuracy system, the accuracy of a system can be assessed by comparing the multiple readings taken from aforementioned techniques and comparing them with the actual reading by determining the same at site through some uh, accurate instrument. Like we can have a total session survey for a small stretch and then compare the results of the total session survey with that of the ladder camera. And we can access uh, assess the, the accuracy of the uh, system. Relative accuracy is achieved by measuring a certain parameter in a model as against the real time measurement of system. Absolutely accuracy is more to do with the position of the entity with respect to the model and on ground. How do we mitigate the errors? The surveys must look into errors post completion to attain a high, highly accurate responsibility of the data. There are three types of error. The gross error, mistakes made during measurement, and systematic uh, error, errors due to miscalibrations, uh, and then random errors and noise in the measurements, whatever disturbances there, uh, that also errors are creeping. The first two errors can be nullified by cross-checking and high degree of accuracy during collaboration. Uh, the random error are not possible to admit due to their random nature. Photogrammetry camera's accuracy is a range is between two to three centimeters, whereas in LIDAR it is between one to two centimeters. So like all uh, other instances, there are short drawbacks to these uh, both these systems, also mostly pertaining to the confusion related to the global context and some local variations based on the landscape, which we will discuss below. We are working on a DPI project from Panipat, uh, Haryana to Jalandhar in Punjab state, and the topo survey has been uh, carried out using a drone mounted data. Recently, we have, uh, we have been we have conducted this uh, survey, topo survey, uh, using a drone uh, with uh, camera, a uh, LiDAR camera mounted on it. And uh, we have observed that data analysis really needs a lot of experts uh, who are uh, well concerned with the software and also the topo survey. Actually, I had myself been to the vendor's office and uh, saw a team of around 15 to 20 experts analyzing the data. And uh, it's really very 
complicated and the person who is doing the work must understand the technical aspect of the engineering and also and also the software so what are the problems in huge cost both initial and maintenance is very costly equipment complex working mechanism and need expert to understand the workflow lots of component and all need to work like a cohesive unit there will be so many uh, so many components there and also the team is there they have to work as a cohesive unit Uh, actually, uh, I uh, I'm showing you the standard operating procedure for uh, doing this uh, survey. So, better for topography survey using uh, aerial hybrid ladder. These are the details: mission planning, data acquisition, area mapping, and data analysis. This is the flow flow of our work. First, the client is planned. The input data actually file collected from the client in drawing and table format. We normally share a Google Google Earth image with them, showing the alignment. This drawing, this convert is drawing file into a camel format. Google will come in camel format in Google Earth. Create the flight plan with reference to camel flight plan planned accordingly. Every flight covers an area of about one to two square kilometers. Flight requires 20 percent more than the required, but pretty more area than the required area. Each connecting flight must have an overlap of at least 100 meters. Every time the uh, capacity of the ladder uh, drone. Is a, is a very important factor. Some drones are can go up to a length of uh, 10 kilometers. So every time you shift the uh, station point, you have to see that at least 100 meters of overlap is there. The ground uh, control points are actually planned. Once the flight plans are ready, we plot the uh, GCP or the ground control points on the flight plan. Should be placed evenly throughout. So the ground control points also should have uh, should be evenly placed. Minimum eight to ten ground control points need to be plotted in each flight. So as you can see, the ground control points have been marked uh, using a GPS, and uh, they have been painted uh, so that uh, it can it is visible from top while doing the actual topo survey with the uh, drone. With respect to the local permanent benchmark, the GPS points are picked. If there's no permanent benchmark, then we establish permanent benchmarks by taking 18 to 24 hour of observation using that DGP system. Then actually we upload the uh, uploading on the planner, open flight planner, create new project and name it, import KML or uh, file op option, SH, uh, .SHB file option, upload the flight uh, plan. As per the desired uh, plan, we set the height, front overlap and side overlap.
cloud data synchronization with image. TSM and DTM can be directly extracted from this. These are the different formats of uh, output, key point matching, type point, automatic type points are created during this step. These are the basis for next step processing. This is the image that, that is created by the LiDAR camera. These are different types of images uh, of the same location. The following are the output, the ortho mosaic, the digital surface model, and a digital terrain model. You see the different images over here. These are the types of images that we get the true color image, the reflectance, elevation, and the returns. The same uh, area. And these are the technical details the weight of the equipment was 900 grams. Projecting uh, rating was one IP44. Measurement range was 10%, 190 meter. Typical operation altitude was 50 to 150 meter. Serving accuracy, 3 centimeter. Point rate, 2 lakh 40 thousand points per second. First or strongest uh, return. Then 4 lakh 80 thousand points for the dual return. Scanning patterns, non repetitive uh, petrol scan. Time scan. These are the details, technical details. Right on to the slide. So, what is this uh, system? No clear cut definition and classification of UAV makes it difficult to apply unified uh, UAV for all bridges uh, system. But there should be some standardization. In, uh, this type of topo survey where a drone uh, is being used. The local regions vary according to the countries. Uh, what works in India might not work in Australia. Uh, there are a lot of, uh, even in, within the country, different states have different uh, rules and regulations. Especially you're flying the, if you're flying the drone on a say, defense area, you have to take a lot of permissions. Sometimes even permission is not granted. Like so, uh, there are some stretches in uh, Ambala and uh, Jalandhar where there were defense uh, establishment there. And so they didn't permit us at all for us to fly the drone. So in such locations, total length of around 15 kilometers, we did the survey by using total station. What is the conclusion? It is pertinent to note that there is drastic reduction in the time for actual field survey. We uh, reduce the time so drastically. If you don't doing a total session survey, and then maybe around maximum five kilometers per day you can do. But here you can do the survey of Almost 300 kilometers in a period of four to five days. Uh, this is a case study of a bridge. Uh, and the, like the comparison table is there. When the MBA you used huge uh, high due to lo lots of movements involved 30 percent of total cost. Time factor was very high. Cost factor high due to machine and number of personnel. Level of service function of traffic flow, etc. And for UAV, low only setting up, there's no setting up actually required. Just uh, go to the site and start your drone. Initially high, but reduce, later reduces cost with number of projects. So for a UAV, if you're invested uh, in a UAV, initially of course the cost has to be very high. Then as the, as we use number of users increases, we can we can economize on it. The level of service is very high as the diversion problems are uh, resolved. So I've completed inventory, condition survey, and bridge rating so far. Let us now go to the uh, distress bridges. First, I'll share a uh, small video of the Palavarutam uh, flyover in the city of Puchin. Uh, very important flyover. Uh, recently constructed, recently commissioned, and still it had a lot of problems, a lot of shear cracks. Uh, and even the pier caps were having uh, cracks. So we had to highlight these. Uh, uh, faults. Uh, initially, there was resistance from the local bodies that uh, no, it's, it's not really very severe. Finally, they had to accept it, and the entire flyer was demolished and reconstructed. Now, today we are having a almost a new flyer. So this is a small presentation on that flyer. Uh, 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 so as you can see, the media is very, very, very strong over there, and they laid a wreath on the flyer. Declaring it as dead flower. So these are the photographs during the initial stages, inspection of the uh, flyover. We had we had observed this uh, bridge for 
four uh, four cycles with with the pass every cycle we could see that the cracks were propagating and the uh, width of the crack also was increasing alarmingly although the photograph as it appears from the left side photo you will find that uh, it looks like a very good bridge this is the state of the bearing we have measured the crack widths and uh, officers from nha also came they were joint visits they were high, uh, we had explained to, we had to explain to them the details of the uh, I mean the status of the bridge there's a close photograph of the cracks that were developing then they carried out some uh, these actually fixed strain gauges also to monitor the cracks now after the after highlighting all the faults uh, it was the entire bridge was demolished within a very short period of around 18 months or so a new bridge, a new flyover was constructed this flyover is uh, being uh, located in a very popular city and also it was actually located on the national highway so it had to be done very fast this is the photograph of the new bridge as you can see it is now open to traffic there's one more small rob a few kilometers away from the flyover where also there are a lot of cracks uh, it was also in distress they have highlighted highlighted the cracks and probably is under repairs now shear cracks have developed in the girders here also the shear crack, uh, there is a, in press also they have mentioned this. Uh, it's surprising to note that un, just under the flower there is a uh, government office which was fully fully functioning. It was a risk which we had to we had to highlight to the authorities. Going to the next uh, distress bridge. NH966A, more popular than the container, uh, container bypass for the city of Kuchi. Here also, a container road was inspected by us, uh, on, and during four cycle following observation is there, uh, our team, uh, one of the structures. Actually, the pro problem here was the methodology of construction the concessioner the contractor was not work had not worked technically in a better reason these are the bridges that were uh, located on, along this uh, stretch and for each bridge i have shown the distress you can see the pedestal tracks wooden blocks were placed they were not removed stress formed and uh, transferred to the pedestal actually because lock plates were not removed the stress was directly transferred to the pedestal of the bearings and uh, there are cracks. You can see over here the wooden block also was not removed. Uh, temporary support for the for erecting those uh, bearings, resulting in transfer of stresses to the girder. Cracks of 2 mm width were observed. End locks of POT as you can uh, bearings were not they were not cut. Actually, this had to be removed. And uh, because of negligence of the uh, contractor, it created a lot of problems. You can see the unequal settlement of the bearing. There were cracks on the pedestal. Spalling of concrete was observed. Surprisingly, the girder, etc., were in good condition, but the support system uh, in the bearing and pedestal were very failing. Quality also was an issue. These are the photographs of a pedestal with so much uh, honeycombing. You can see the condition of the pedestals over here. Bearing also because the lock plates were not removed, uh, unequal segment of the bearing. Approaches also probably, uh, approach lab was not there, so there was a huge settlement. Tracks on the pier were they observed. Some of the close photographs of the pedestal, you can see the horrible condition that the uh, ex existing structures were at. Tracks, spalling of concrete, settlement in the approaches, 
these are photos of different bridges that were uh, located along this container road sharing those photographs so what is the overall observation in the screen uh, stage girders and foundations are found to be in good condition settlement of approaches observed in all the bridges wooden blocks and concrete hindering bearings uh, functioning stresses being transferred to girder pedestals and pier gap inadequate uh, cover observed in pile gaps uh, piers and pedestals resulting in exposed reinforcement and spalling of concrete end lux of uh, bearing are not released at number of locations bearing show rotation beyond limits bearing pedestals are not in plane head wall of the low height uh, for, of low height for minor bridges at and are not provided so we had suggested these remedial measures and lumps and uh, wooden planks restricting the function of bearing to be released removed uh, for all uh, movements all over movements bearing rotational movements capacity to be verified from the detailed drawing and cross check at site to identify bearing requiring uh, replacement we had actually invert, uh, inverted uh, manufacturer bearings to visit the site and see for himself the condition of bearing and suggest remedial measures bearing materials not in plane to be recasted most of the bearings they had to be pedestals had to be demolished and recasted repair elements of stress pier and pile cap by grouting removing or resting reinforcement application of anti rust treatment short kit of concrete application of uh, safe rp or composite to enhance load carrying capacity protective polymer coating to be applied after repairs geogrids to be incorporated near approach span to prevent settlement these were the remedial measures that we had suggested then we did one uh, there one one bridge at uh, queen barman in bengal there also uh, this is also there i'm sharing the presentation of that bridge also नो साउंड सर आवाज नहीं आ रही कुछ भी सो वी हैव रिमूव रिमूव मेजर्स रिक्वायर्ड वाज रिमूवल ऑफ द सुपर स्ट्रक्चर एंड टू बी रिलेट विद स्टील गर्डर्स लो विस्कोसिटी एपॉक्सी ग्रोटिंग ऑफ सब स्ट्रक्चर इज अ डिटेल्स ऑफ केबल्स दैट वी प्रेजेंट This is the end of the slide. Uh, we'll move on to the next slide. Dharla Press, uh, Dharla Bridge. Some red. the location of the bridge it was commissioned in uh, 1984 nine spans of 40 meters each span had three three stage concrete girder pier was of a rectangular vortex here again uh, close photographs of 
different uh, elements allosteric bearing uh, here the main problem was that the load was not transferred but there is a eccentric load you know that directly transferred with the center of the uh, bearing and that of the uh, diaphragm was not matching as you can see the photograph over here uh, the sketch over here the center of bearing and the center of diaphragm very different this caused an uh, eccentric load on the bearings which was the main cause of failure i close the photograph of the same as we can see the extreme bearing is almost coming to the, on the edge of the girder with the with as a result that the bearing also extreme bearing subject to, to deformation the crack uh, widths have been measured there are also structural cracks on the piers bulging and splitting and displacement in elastomeric bearings has been observed our team working uh, measuring the dimensions of the elements the summary of the observations our team so we had uh, suggested measures how to uh, rehabilitate re re this bridge we had uh, suggested uh, encasing of the of the uh, piers so support i mean for distress pier uh, two different uh, options were provided so erecting staging and carrying out the grouting and other works to various structural members jacketing of piers and preparation of jack seats Disconnection of utility, closure of bridge. Actually, we had suggested complete closure of the bridge. Actually, the uh, scarifying the bearing force and dismantling of expansion net, lifting of girders, removal of bearing and pedestals, casting of new pedestal and placement of bearings there of uh, there after lowering of girder, relaying of expansion joints, the uh, replacement of approach lap, uh, relaying of bearing ports with lightweight bearing uh, bearing ports, opening of bridge port traffic. approximate time required for the entire rehabilitation was around 6 months the so one more bridge panchanan setu here also we have seen lot of uh, distresses you can see the uh, elstomeric bearing the summary of the our observations moving on to the next slide i have completed this inventory condition survey bridge rating and distress bridging now so bridge evaluation and prediction modeling uh, actually this is the most uh, critical part of the presentation wherein having seen the various methods of bridge inventory and condition survey we move on to the next chapter which is bridge evaluation bridge evaluation after the results of the condition survey we have to evaluate the bridge uh, sir bridge <laughs> points of uh, hello कलेक्टेड Having collected all the required information regarding the structure, regarding the bridge, now the next logical step will be to <clears throat> evaluate the bridge. What is the present status of the bridge, and uh, what is the balance type of the bridge, etc. The bridge is exposed to all kind of weather conditions, subject to varying uh, variety of traffic loads. In addition to wind load, its own self-weight dead load, superimposed dead loads, structural deterioration, also takes place on account of aging of its material. All these factors affect its load carrying capacity. 
it therefore necessary to evaluate its loading carrying capacity at uh, load carrying capacity at regular intervals <clears throat> we have already seen the physical condition of the uh, sorry of the bridges and observed that inspection of the remotest part of the bridge can be photographed studied and distressed bridge uh, identified for necessary repairs of the day of the day. However, it's not necessary that all distressed bridges be visible. It's not necessary that uh, a bridge is on is actually under distress, but is not visible to the naked eye. <clears throat> Many of the existing bridges in service today are designed were designed for less traffic, smaller vehicles, slower speeds, and lighter traffic, and they have become inadequate according to the current loading standards of uh, the uh, course of practice for design and highway uh, highway uh, bridges. Even in case of newer bridges, deterioration caused by unforeseen service condition, adverse environmental actions, and inadequate uh, maintenance is causing great concern. In the case of the case is that of our Palavratam flyover, where the recently constructed bridge was observed to be under severe distress. Therefore, field response data to calibrate an analytical model that closely represents behavior observed in field data can be made. To evaluate the bridge in terms of its present load carrying capacity and predict the future life balance life. Uh, decision makers and our society at large should be able to choose whether to spend money on rehabilitating a bridge or to demolish it. Depending on the status of the present condition of the bridge, we have to decide whether to go in for a reconstruction or a repair and repetition. The bridge engineers and the policy makers are being increasingly pressed to justify the funding order uh, proposed to maintain the bridges. It shows the importance of an exclusive bridge management system, which is a very much important, very much necessary for the decision makers to come at a, arrive at a decision. In view of this, several countries have the initial development of bridge management system for assisting their decision makers in finding optimal strategies for, for maintenance, rehabilitation, and replacement of bridges. Furthermore, it's also, it has also to be ensured okay, for money by, uh, by carrying, uh, carrying out premium. Preventive measures work at appropriate time, so the future maintenance limits are also kept at minimum level. As already uh, mentioned, uh, proper and uh, timely repairs of a bridge will definitely increase the life of the bridge. Bridge management is a rational and systematic approach for organizing and carrying out the activities related to planning, design, construction, maintenance and rehabilitation, and replacement of bridges. Different methods are uh, used to evaluate the condition of a bridge and to assess its balanced life. The following three methods uh, are discussed in the upcoming slide. One is the fuzzy logic, second is the deterministic approach, and the stochastic logic. So prediction models are based on fuzzy logic. It is a form of many-valued logic in which the truth values of variables may be any real number between 0 and 1, both inclusive. It is employed to handle the concept of partial truth, where the truth value may range between completely true and completely false. Then there's a deterministic logic, this is logic based on simple logic of maintenance uh, data. Whatever data is available regarding the maintenance of the structure, on, based on that data, the deterministic logic is used. Stochastic logic is a Markov chain in a, is a uh, stochastic model describing a sequence of possible events in which the probability of each event depends only on the state attained in the previous event. In continuous time, it is known as the uh, Markov process. It is named after the Russian mathematician Andrew Markov. So bridge evaluation using fuzzy logic. The bridge condition rating is the datum for any bridge management system. The usefulness of a bridge management system and the accuracy of bridge rating rely upon the bridge condition data, which constitutes subjective judgment and intuition of the bridge inspector. So a procedure like fuzzy logic would be useful to handle the uncertainty, imprecision, and subjective judgment. The bridge inspector will give his own opinion depending on his experience and uh, his intuition. The schematic uh, representation of the conditional assessment of the bridge is given over here. So, bridge uh, different types of assessments are there, major distress observed, then detailed inspections, evaluation of inspection results, assessment of condition, condition rating, and final result on condition rating. The bridge condition rating is that. Uh, so, fuzzy logic is an approach to variable processing that allows for multiple values to be processed through the same variable. Fuzzy logic actually, fuzzy is actually uh, in uh, another word, it is vague, vague logic. Attempts to solve problems with an open, imprecise spectrum of data, and that makes it possible to obtain an array of accurate conclusions. 
Fuzzy logic is designed to solve problems by considering all available information and making the best possible decision given the input. Human tend to use combination of predict, uh, predicate logic and fuzzy logic. If you are in uh, off field catching in a uh, cricket ball in the air, then your precise logic will calculate trajectory and you start running to the point of intercept. You know, uh, if a ball is hit high in the air by a uh, batsman, then the fielder on the boundary runs to, to a certain point where he thinks that the ball is going to land at that particular point. Or once close to the ball, the brain of the outfield uh, and the brain of the outfield lacks the ability to accurately estimate distance and speed because the ball is coming straight at the outfielder. Once you near the point where you think that the ball is going to come, then you start get cutting, cutting up. So then you start, uh, the filter will start to uh, readjust his location. The human brain switches to fuzzy logic and that says, get me closer, get me closer, and so on. That is why you see for outfield in the cricket run to a, a spot and then move around as the ball gets closer. We must have observed a lot of times uh, on TV that when the fielder is very near to the location where he expects the ball to come, then he suddenly finds that ball is not really actually at the point where he is standing, then he runs about again here and there to get the ball. Decision maker should be able to choose whether to spend money on reevaluating a bridge or to demolish it. The bridge engineers and the policy makers are being increasingly pressed to justify this uh, funding. The bridge inspector file is inspecting the different elements of structure uh, can give a report on each element as very good, fair, good, fair, average, poor, or very poor. This report will depend upon the experience of the inspector and his perception. So always the inspector, whatever uh, his perception, his idea of the condition of the field, that will be mentioned. How this report will be a vague, and it's very difficult to draw any conclusion. If you are sending two or three inspectors at the same spot, each one will have his own idea about the status. It's therefore imperative that we must be able to quantify it by means of a certain number which will give us a near accurate idea of the condition of the element. Including is relative important and with respect to the whole structure as such. When inspecting a word, then it should be, we should be able to understand that the importance of, this, of that particular element uh, with reference to the whole structure as such. So the importance factor for the element at various generation stages should be evolved from the response of com uh, competent bridge inspector of the experts. For example, the parapet of a bridge or the railing of a bridge is in distress is not really very, very important from the structural safety point of view, or, or rather it is uh, from the design point of view. These membership functions for structural importance were originally constructed, uh, constructed through a survey among a number of bridge engineers and inspectors. Then the collected data was statistically processed and the mean was presented by Melham and Turulia. Uh, uh, and membership functions for structural importance, corresponding to different ratings of element is not bridge specific, Membership functions for structure important reported by uh, MLM are used. The following tables from one to four give the rating and relative importance of each element. The tables that follow, uh, they indicate the importance of the structure. Like you see the table, study the table over here. Uh, the, uh, the item is mentioned and then rating from zero to nine and the importance of that particular item. So the, so they take concrete. Uh, if the rating is zero, then it is one. If it is one, then it's 0.96 and so on and so forth. So there are for different uh, items of the uh, structure, ratings have been tabled here. So like, the inspector's observation are also seen for deck wearing, wearing surface is going eight, for deck condition nine, so on and so forth, for deck superstructure and substructure. In bridge engineering, systematic in identification of the order of the degree of the deficiency of bridges that are considered for their condition estimate is, is a usual problem. Until now, no systematic approach was available for priority ranking of existing bridges. Condition rank, uh, ranking and rating of bridges using fuzzy logic. In view of this, a methodology based on uh, analytic hierarchy model is used for ranking of the existing bridges towards their assessment of prevailing condition, which would help in uh, fixing their repair order. The comparison matrices for different layers of hierarchy are formulated for arriving at the relative weights of the uh, item under each layer. Estimation indices of individual bridge components have to be arrived based on the bridge inspector's observation and the result of the field and laboratory testing. Uh, based on the uh, based on synthesized evaluation matrix, the priority ranking of the bridge is evolved. 
for complementing the multi uh, multi attributive decision making or MADM model based on priority vector of the uh, element of the component is also considered because it gives a more realistic preparation of the condition of the component. So, the conclusion is that a computer program has have been developed on the uh, based on the proposed methodology for condition evalu uh, evaluation through prioritization and rating of bridges. It is found that the methodology is capable of handling any number of bridges without any limitation on consideration of components and elements and rating scale. Thus, the methodology uh, proposed methodology would certainly help the engineers and policymakers concerned with the bridge management to arrive at a systematic judgment and to formulate methodical steps towards retrofitting, rehabilitation of or demolition of bridges in future years. It is worthy to mention here that uh, though the condition of uh, innovation from uh, fuzzy logic based on AHP may be used as a useful tool for decision making, it should be utilized with adequate care because the whole procedure is dependent on different estimation indexes of controlling parameters which have to be taken for inspector's observation and results of field and laboratory testing. Obviously, since the entire conclusion and logic, uh, entire logic is based on inspector's perception uh, it has to be used either carefully so bridge evaluation using deterministic logic the logic to predict the balanced life of a bridge based on the present condition survey of the bridge and data of many previous years including that originally considered loads and design stress calculations is called deterministic logic so this logic is basically based on the data that is available on the maintenance of the bridge, right from the uh, commissioning stage to the present uh, present stage. What is the maintenance uh, that was done on the bridge? So safety of a highway structure system depends on very much on the proper maintenance of bridges. The level of re uh, required maintenance is typically determined through a series of regular field inspections with guidance of safety and economy trade-off. Time-dependent reliability analysis cannot be uh, utilized for the time being, since the majority of the bridges are being either being not regularly inspected or not inspected at all. So if you have a very good record of the maintenance that was done on the corridor on the bridges right from the inception, then only this logic can be uh, utilized. A simple method can be able to assess the remaining service life of a bridge by de uh, defining a different uh, relation between its current condition rating and its age by evaluating a set of bridges at different ages. The average life of a bridge is predicted to be between 80 to 100 years. In predicting the remaining uh, service life of a bridge, the analysis builds either on deterioration model or on a reliability analysis, uh, reliability analysis that uses regular periodic inspection records. Advanced time in, uh, dependent mathematical and statistical models have been developed for this purpose. Success or predictive uh, ability of such model depends on the ability of sufficient relevant information. Time dependent reliability based models exist to predict the bridge life expectancy. All the investors depend on periodic inspection, reports, and uh, accuracy of such approaches rely directly on the size and uh, quality of the data collected. It is evident that the uh, accuracy of prediction will depend on the quality of bridge inspection, period of inspection, and the number of years over which the data has been collected. The uh, reliability-based bridge inspection process involves an owner establishing a team of experts referring to as a reliability assessment panel in order to define and assess the durability and reliability credits of the bridge. The RAP uses uh, engineering rational, experience, and typical uh, decision patterns to evaluate the uh, characteristics of the bridge. This evaluation is done through a relatively simple process that consists of three primary steps. Step one, what can go wrong and how likely it is. So identify possible damage modes for the elements of the bridge. And what are the consequences? Assess the consequences in terms of safety and serviceability, assuming that even damage modes occur. And step three, determine the inspection interval and scope. Uh, use a reliability matrix to prioritize inspection needs and then assign an inspection interval for the bridge based on the results of steps one and step two. A schematic uh, diagram on the, the RBI process and matrix for inspection intervals. Uh, select the bridges for analysis, modify the, identify the damages. Occurrence factor is important, consequence factor. The inspection practices that are used, inspection and required, uh, required uh, reassessment required or not. That is the flow chart. And the occurrence factor, the lesser the occurrence factor, longer is the consequence factor. As the occurrence factor increases, uh, the shorter is the 
कौन से वेस्ट फैक्टर थ्रू दिस प्रोसेस इंडिविजुअल ब्रिजेस और फैमिलीज ऑफ ब्रिजेस ऑफ सिमिलर डिजाइन कैरेक्टर कैन बी एसेस्ड टू एवेलेट द इंस्पेक्शन फ्रॉम रियलिटी बेस्ड इंजीनियरिंग एनालिसिस ऑफ द लाइकलीड ऑफ सीरियस डैमेज this approach considers the structure type age condition and operational environment in a systematic manner to provide a rational assessment process for inspecting uh, inspection planning <coughs> documented rational for the inspection shift uh, strategy utilized for a given bridge door the damage modes most important to ensuring the safety of the bridge are identified so that the inspection efforts are can be focused to improve the reliability all this depends on the data that is available with us on the maintenance of the bridge on the pursuit of practical bridge inspection safe uh, operation includes strength considerations and also includes a variety of serviceability limit states and maybe related in some way to the strength considerations but are not directly uh, direct measures of strength so this is a uh, part of probability curve that uh, that i have shown here yeah so infantry infant uh, mortality so initially when the bridge is commissioned like, due to a on account of inherent design or maybe execution failure execution mistake it can be a failure then the useful life there is very like less likely of failure because that is a period where the bridge is used and it's already tested in instant uh, in, in infant in initial stage are already over and then the wear out stage where the bridge starts failing at a faster rate This is a table which shows the the various levels, low uh, category, low, moderate, high, and uh, severe. The definition, uh, descriptive definition, uh, is given in the table. The examples are also given. What what is the level of the uh, structure? So when is a severe uh, in under severe category, the major collapse of a uh, portion or all the bridge forcing closure. Bridge is not safe for use, significant safety concern, or whatever. Similarly for level high low the different examples are there so in order to arrive at a definite methodology it is important to note that a calendar based uniform inspection strategy must be implemented for bridge inspection to a new reliability based approach that will better allocate inspection resources and improve the safety and reliability of bridge thus the ability of data of bridge maintenance over a long period coupled with the availability of original bridge design is prerequisite for such a methodology The interest of bridge inspection will also depend on the present status and age of the bridge. If the bridge rating is more than eight, then the inspection uh, then the inspection period of say three years may be sufficient. However, as the bridge ages, the rate of deterioration of bridge will also increase, and the interval of the inspection will also have to be more frequent. Obviously, if the bridge is in good condition, you don't have to uh, maintain it at shorter intervals. So as the bridge ages, definitely the maintenance period uh, you know is shorter. So now, last uh, logic, stochastic logic. The bridge condition rating is the data for any system. In predicting the remaining service life of bridge, the analysis bridge either on a deterioration model or on a reliability analysis that uses regular periodic inspection. Advanced time-dependent mathematical and statistical models have been developed for this purpose. Successor uh, predictive ability of such models depends on availability of sufficient uh, relevant information. in the absence of real, uh, previous inspection records this assessment method becomes indispensable so stochastic logic is more useful <coughs> where there is the lack of data on the bridge maintenance the advantage of such a quick and uh, simple preliminary evaluation is that the bridge owner can rank the bridges and initiate right away a detailed study on maintenance program for the bridge on a highway route the method makes use of latest bridge condition survey Data to arrive at a balanced life prediction. So the whatever is the latest data that is available on the bridge is used for this for this uh, for determining the balanced life. A backward prediction model uh, has been developed to generate the missing bridge condition ratings in past years. So based on the present condition, uh, we can predict what 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 had happened earlier uh, based on the present condition. Thereby ensuring adequate condition data as required in long term performance modeling. the bpm establish a correlation between the known condition rating and the non bridge factors including climate condition rate traffic volume and population of other factors also are taken into consideration
I have given an example of uh, bridge, especially in Turkey, for 21 highway bridges on part of uh, as a part of Route D2000, connecting uh, Bursa town to Kanakkale. Was inspected. The alignment of the route is at a high suspect zone. Uh, Bursa is a manufacturing center and with a concentration on automobile and textile products. Heavy load trucks move uh, along this route. So this uh, is a graph which shows uh, different conditions. There are number of bridges, all have been inspected at some uh, point of the age. So main body condition rating is there. Serviceability condition rating is there. Uh, then uh, uh, retaining condition, course retaining condition is uh, has been given, and the overall rating is given. There are the dots that you see are different ratings of different bridges at different ages. And this is summary of the report. And uh, if you can see the bridge number, the name of the bridge, location, its age as of now, then main body rating, earth rating, service rating, and the final rating. And based on that estimated remaining service life has been predicted. If you see the bridge number one, uh, you will find that the uh, it is age is 23 years. Its main burden rating is 4.45. That of earth rating is 4.3. Service is 5.22. Final uh, taking into all the three factors is 4.55, and the remaining estimated life is 36 years. So this is a, also a very good uh, method of predicting the predicting the dinosaur. Here, since all the uh, bridges uh, were located in the same area. So exposure to atmosphere, uh, climate conditions, extra were the same. Although the bridges were of different depth, the overall condition could be assessed. This is a link for the reference. So with that, uh, I have completed the bridge evaluation and this thing. So before we end, uh, a peep into the future, what is the future of uh, bridge condition and survey? Our company is working on an application of this technology in bridge and structures. Uh, the Xelos technology, which I'll share now, a small presentation. So it's a company based in Austria, and they have worked on offshore platforms, uh, condition of uh, offshore platforms. Basically, it is uh, based on the uh, strain gauges that are that are uh, installed in different locations of the structure. How can you understand how a structure will perform with particular regard to stresses and deflections, fatigue life, natural frequencies and mode scapes, vibration response, shock and impact damage, and uh, temperature distribution? These are the factors we can study. So, all these factors are important to on a timely manner to operate safely, reduce operation costs, more time, convenient and accurate uh, replacement, extend original life, impact ongoing development. So this is a uh, presentation by Axelos. We build the world's fastest and most advanced engineering simulations. Actually, they have worked with Shell. They have saved a lot of money for their uh, offshore uh, structures for Shell. Uh, the other advantage is one is very fast, provides major speed up uh, compared to FEA finite uh, element analysis for any uh, PDs, example, which more than a uh, thousand times faster. FEM is a finite element analysis FEA and uh, reduced basis finite element analysis, RE uh, finite element. Modify models by character parameters, efficiently handle systems with many parameters, a lot of parameters, a lot of 
Pandora can be considered. Cloud-based platform is cloud-based platform is uh, used. So these are the these are number uh, uh, locations where it can be used. Can use it in wind turbine. You can use the pressure vessel, rotating machinery like airs, etc. Fixed structures is this platform. And even submarine floating structures, barrage. Comparison with other uh, uh, base operations are the substructuring or super elements are also used, but uh, RBFA has key differences. Super elements are a reformulation of FEA, uh, hence gives identical answer as standard FEA with a similar computational cost and imposes strict limitation on the number of super nodes that can be used. In contrast, the RBFA is reduced model that reproduces FEA within the user specified tolerance. And this enables a very large speed of compared to FEA with no component in uh, interface restriction. Super elements do not have parameters, hence recompute component data for each modification. So uh, this is the uh, update the RBF model with sensor data and predict assessment uh, asset performance in real time. Uh, real time monitoring, continuous monitoring can be done through this system. So how are the assets currently designed or and managed? The use of finite element analysis, which was developed in the 1960s, uh, minimizes the need to make assumptions about how an object or fluid will respond to uh, changes over time, and hence allows accurate result to be obtained to manage what will fail, when it will fail, what if scenarios, uh, and build it right. The ongoing problem will, with conventional FA is that model data is too often too large and complex for even the most current powerful computer, therefore it has limitations. So finite element analysis has its own limitations. Speed is very slow. Cannot do big complex assets. Uh, inaccuracies are uh, inaccurate is there. Inaccuracy is there, and uh, will not do a real time uh, when continuous monitoring system is not there. So what are the uh, to overcome the limitations? Engineers typically use the following methods: models for screening, uh, for detail detection in accuracy complex process, workflow, and data management over it. So XLO system, this breaks through this barrier with uh, RBFA. Uh, components, pre-analyzed components are there, store resulting uh, database on the cloud, model assembly connect components to create simulation uh, ready model, model setup imposes uh, load, example, hydrostatic, hydro, hydrodynamic, uh, tank loading, and unloading. And solution so analysis is there, and then post processing. So this is one of the structures that was like the other structures. Right. Defects are observed in detail. Zoom in and uh, observe the defects. There are different uh, locations where it can be used. Wind turbine. Then there's an offshore platform. This was actually a platform was observed for uh, from day one to day 10 and uh, at, under different uh, weather conditions. You can see the platform, the color of the structure use the stress condition. So on account of continuous monitoring, we can even uh, increase the, we can extend the life of the model. The digital pin can be generate a unique set of training data for machine learning models. Actually, basically the uh, most important factor is that creating a digital model uh, of the structure. Right now, our company is working on a, a bridge, a sample bridge, and we are trying to create a digital model, uh, which will be actually uh, represent the actual true bridge at, at site. Is there advantages? Uh, and the purpose of showing this slide was uh, future 
future of the bridge condition survey is going to be real time continuous monitoring of the structure. All very, very important structures, such as the maybe a ceiling bridge on the Mumbai, uh, which is very important from, from actually uh, connecting a uh, connection of uh, old Mumbai with the uh, developed uh, area. Also, maybe areas where the location of a bridge is very near to the border, any border, etc. Such bridges have to be monitored continuously. So this system is very useful for such locations. Although it's in the initial stages, but maybe in the future, near very near future, uh, we should be able to develop a system where uh, once the accelerometers are installed on the bridges, we can have a continuous monitoring of the bridge uh, condition. And if that, in case of any any uh, fault that develops, uh, immediately uh, reopening or repairs can be carried out. Uh, with this, I conclude my presentation. Uh, I'm very much thankful for the patient hearing from my presentation. And if there are any questions, it's good. Hello. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, if there are any questions, please let me know. I'll try to answer them to my level best ability. Hello, sir. Yes, please. Uh, sir, existing bridges ke drawing, as well drawing, bahut kafi bar available nahi hote jo purane PWD wagare inhone construct kiye hobe. Uske baare mein to uska solution isme kaise liya ja sakta hai? Jab hum karte hain, koi bhi bridge ka assessment karte hain, to usko kis tarah se usko kiya jaye? Agar drawing available nahi hai. Haan, drawings generally apne kaha wo barabar hai. Bahut bar apne pas as well drawing available nahi rehte. Lekin abhi ka jo bridge ka condition hai, abhi ka jo bridge ka condition hai, uske uh, us base, us ke base karke, agar bridge ka age apne ko maalum hai, ya 20 saal hai, ya 25 saal, whatever it is. And jo abhi ka condition hai, usko uh, dhyan mein rakte hoye, hum log earlier kya hua hoga, usko predict kar sakte hain. Lekin uh, abhi ke condition ke basis ke upar, aage ka kya hone wala hai, uska hum log ko prediction jada, jada hi hai. To isliye wo jo stochastic maine bola tha, analysis ka, wo jada useful rehta hai. Ki based on the present condition, uh, what will happen in the near future, we should be able to predict. Generally, if the bridge is good, then we will know what is going to happen in the future. But if there is no data behind the bridge, then we will have to base it on the bridge. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. This data is available for all the software also. It of substructure, uh, how we, we can measure the the component behind the water or under the water. Yeah, that is a that is a uh, shortcoming of the system, like especially like MBI etc., where it's very difficult to uh, very difficult to assess the state of substructure below water, where it is very difficult to approach. Actually, for such purposes, skilled divers are available in the foreign countries, but there also since our if the water is very muddy, it becomes very difficult. But there is a lidar camera, uh, lidar based camera, which I've already mentioned, which can go underwater and study the uh, surface of the uh, substructure. Actually, henceforth, it will be very much uh, it is necessary 
to have a regular uh, record of the bridges, especially maintenance, what we are doing, and what are the uh, normally what are the occurrences of uh, failures in bridges, especially from uh, design point of view, their development of crack extra has to be monitored regularly and continuously. So it is. सर मेरा मेरा क्वेश्चन कंस्ट्रक्शन टाइम के लिए था कि मतलब हम कैसे डिसाइड करें अगर हमारे पास दो ऑप्शन है कि इलास्टोमेरिक फ्लाईओवर में लगा सकते हैं और पॉट पीपीएफ भी लगा सकते हैं मतलब दोनों के डिजाइन करेंगे दोनों सेफ हो सकती हैं तो उसमें अच्छा कौन सा रहता है नाउ डेज मतलब इलास्टोमेरिक या पॉट पीपीएफ जनरली जनरली बिजनेस ऑफ यू नो हैविंग स्पेस ऑफ अप टू 20 25 मीटर्स आल्सो वी गो इन फॉर इलास्टोमेरिक बेयरिंग Whereas any any uh, spans greater than thirty meters, we go in for a pot pity payment. If the span is thirty five meter, the pot. It would be it would be it would be ideal to use a, a pot pity payment. Okay, okay, sir. कुछ रिस्ट्रिक्टिव और नॉन रिस्ट्रिक्टिव टेस्ट का अगर वीडियो या कुछ पीपीटी मिल जाएगा तो बहुत अच्छा होता हाँ जरूर मैं 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 कोशिश करूँगा मेरे पास शायद होगा एनडीटी का उसका अगर वीडियो रहेगा तो ज़्यादा बेहतर रहेगा लेकिन मेरे पास अभी मैं काम कर रहा हूँ एक पानीपत � I think, sir, no questions. Okay. Sir, shall we conclude, sir? No problem. I don't mind, sir. If there are any further questions, uh, you can even mail me. I'll just uh, share my mail ID with you, and also yes. the presentation. So we can definitely clarify any doubts if there are. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you.